Hey everybody, Day Trader Rockstar here, and this is the high probability setup for the week of September 10th. September 10th, we're just uh, Friday here, just ending the, uh, a day where the market ended up closing down. The Dow was down about 80 points, 79, S&P off about 6. NASDAQ, I don't have in front of me right now, but overall, um, we started off, and again, we would consider this a holiday uh, week. We had a shortened week with Labor Day and Monday. But we had the jobs report out today, and that turned out to be a good report. And the market sold off initially off of that, but I didn't, you know, didn't look for it to continue. And we did actually reverse. I'm just going to show you a fast picture of the uh, charts today. So that way we could uh, kind of just kind of up, update you on some of the action. And now this is the S&P, um, and you can see this morning, this is our 930 open. And, um, you know, when we had that... Uh, initial jobs report came out. It came out better than expected. And it, it was pretty much locking in a rate increase, a rate rise into September, which are already priced in 99% probability on that. But this really, you know, when we did come out with that, we sold off a bit until 9.30. Then we could see probably a textbook divergence here at 9 to 9.30, 9 to 9.30, about a half an hour between the one minute time frames. And you can even see here, this was a, a big divergence on all three time frames. This actually snuck by me this morning because I, I was looking at the five minute chart. But if you look at the, I'm looking back here, if you look at that 60 period down here, that is so strong. You know, I really banged the table on that that setup. That is one of the best setups ever. If you get a 60 10 divergence on the one minute time frame, that is game on. And as you can see, it had a nice run up here. So and then all of a sudden we kind of topped out. Things were looking pretty good, and we started selling off. And then there was some news. Now we don't know if this news here, if the market sell off here at this point was maybe some chatter out there. But all of a sudden Trump came out and said, "Hey, we have another two hundred and two hundred sixty billion dollars in tariffs, or what we might lay on tariffs on on two hundred sixty billion more product Chinese products." And the market sold off, and we sold off and chopped around, and then we came back up and chopped around, and basically that's how we ended the day. So the overhanging trade talk still weighing on the market. There was also some commentary out of Trump made some comments uh, yesterday about going after Japan next. Whatever, the market here is uh, well, uh, you know, has knows what to do now during the uh, tariff situation. It doesn't really get that scared. We have the initial pops and then they or drops and then we kind of kind of climb back and overall this is where we're going to look at the big picture now. Overall, the big picture is not that bad. I mean, if you would look at a chart like this and just remember, this is the year chart. We go out to January. Um, this is the beginning of February. So here was January. We had the big run up and we just actually crossed past that just got through that level over the last two couple of weeks so we've actually broken out to new high. it took us all year to go that far so it's you know it's really a consolidation breakout and it's the first breakout and from that point on once we broke out we look for this market to move a little bit higher and then kind of reverse now that's the hard part is t saying well, how far do we go do we go to 28 uh, uh, 2900 do we go to 2930 um, and we get close, closer and closer to the 3,000 mark. Anyway, it ended up getting overbought on the stochastics and rotating back down. But as you can see, nothing has changed on how this market behaves. Divergences are always our best opportunity to give us the best underlying indicator to get on board for those swing trades. And you also use those on your short time frame for those scalps. We had great traders all week. I want to shout out to all the great traders in the room. Um, scalping the markets overnight. And there's a group of tight stops and Anthony and, and there's other traders out there overnight now trading. And it's becoming pretty easy. And I don't want to say that and get people like, you know, like, oh, nothing's easy. But it, you know what? The way the market's been acting overnight. Um, and again, our number one divergence rule works perfect. You just have to have patience. You have to have the, I guess, the, the, um, the discipline to stay up that late or adjust your time frame and stuff. But there is a lot of money to be made in this market. But we know that. That is our core entries there. And on the, on the daily, you can see is very easy to say, all right, that was a buy, that was a buy, that was a buy. That was a buy, oversold, you know, a nice pullback, flag. Here's another nice oversold level with a flag, and there's probably something that got us going. And we knew from that point on we're breaking out. Now we've gotten our first pullback after that breakout. 
and to tell you the truth, nothing really, uh, nothing really looks too bad here. It's just a, another pullback. You know, right now we're on a 20 period moving average. We're almost oversold. We're almost oversold. That sets us up as a 2020 trade, and that's a very bullish flag in a market that continues to push push high. And I said that this morning. I said, what if we go back or we go out into the future and we look back a year from now in the future and we look back? What if we continue just to see consolidation move up, consolidation move up, consolidation move up, consolidation move up, consolidation 3,000, 3,100, 3,000. And next year we're looking back. I said, boy, was it that easy? Well, the market's getting more and more automated. It's getting more and more, um, you know, uh, I automate is probably the best thing. I mean, the 401ks, the ETFs, uh, the rotation of the S&P 500, the companies coming in, coming out, you know, the, the trend is going to be up. So it makes a lot of sense to buy on weakness. And until that doesn't work, it will continue to work. So this could actually be something that's building and we'll take advantage of and possibly for a, for a decent amount of time. You know, and I know it's hard to believe that we could be maybe going up, but go out here. Go out to 2016, 2017, 2018. All pushing higher. Go out further. Well, you know, go out to 2010, 11, 12, all pushing higher. So there's nothing really here changing. It's, it's going to be very hard to uh, call a top here. There is a little, you know, candlestick starting to form. This is on the weekly candlesticks. And we are extended. There's no doubt we are not, ex you know, we're extended. So... Um, but I do believe my personal opinion that this is a different game. We've uh, ad adapted. The market has adapted to some of these th things. We know the underlying reason the market's moving up is based off of the economy. Uh, you know, the, the market knows everything. It has it. it. It'll weed out everything. If things are not going good, you'll see it in the market. If things are going good, you'll see it in the market. Even if you hear something different, the market is reflecting policies and 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 it's just it, it's it's always right the market's always right it's always right so it's telling us hey pull back probably another pop i got to continue to look for this action to the upside i want to stay bu mostly bullish and uh you know just throughout there i think the market gets knocked down by a black swan event eventually odds have that something will happen i don't know what's going to be you know, we talk, we joke, we have fun with po politics sometimes a little too much in the room. But we know that there's people that are pro-administration and some people are against the administration or against the president. So you're going to have those. And the people who are against it are calling for impeachment. And if that ever played out, yeah, I think the market would get hit on that. But then again, the other people would say that's impossible. It'll never happen. And yeah, and that could play out too. So... And the world turns, you know, right? What I want to do is give you a, a, a really technical analysis of the market. Point out the best times to be in the market. That's what the divergence wants, we want to do. And the times before that, we have to have patience and discipline and, and continue to learn. Uh, learn, learn, you know, the art of the trade. <laughs> we, really, we really do. So with that said, this week was a good week. It was a good week. We're going to go through the trades. It was a good week. The HPS setups are starting to trigger, but there they are not many um, left. And so what I mean by that, if we take a look at our HPS site. Let me bring that back up. Let me take a look here. Oh, I got so much going on, and I had some tech issues today. But if we go back to the HPS site. Here it is. You'll see that um, we have a few that are active. Uh, we had one that hit its stop, but I'm actually what is that? PKG. Uh, I did put that stop in there. Uh, technically, it did hit the stop and went out. I still have a hold of my P PKG, and I'll, I'll explain why. And it's an option. And most of these I will hold because the options will be my stop. You know, So these things are usually close to in the money, worth a, a couple hundred dollars per contract. You know, That's the average. And then uh, you know, that really comes down to my stop on that so i you know let these things play out most of them do play out you're gonna see we trade them out so ibm is still active uh pkg uh, we're gonna go over all these you can see the uh, swk has started the out the altria oh that was the home depot did that the altria is still active and i love altria going into next week and we'll talk about that one uh ingersoll ran i put this one as checked because it was a beautiful beautiful setup 
um, and it just missed its, just missed its, um, well, no, wait, 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 let's see why that's not triggered. Hmm. Actually, I don't know why it said it's triggered. It shouldn't say it's triggered. It's actually triggered now, and it's actually looking okay. So, that, that's, actually, that's the Altria. That's the Altria. That's not the one I'm looking at. Let me double check here what I'm looking at here. Sorry. The Ingersoll Rand. That was the one. There we go. <clears throat> I'm confused. All right, the reason why that has trekked us because we came close, but no cigar of getting that pullback. But the flag was there, and was what we call a 2020 trade. So the 2020 trade, um, is active on this, and you're going to see a lot of 2020 trades on this week's watch list. I'm going to tell you that too. A little hint for those out there who will not get the second part. Second part of the watch list here will be all the uh, live setups going into next week. First part is just a little review. But as you can see, this is what the HPS uh, looks like. You get these setups, and then uh, these setups are automated to your account. And actually, it did hit its target. Why didn't it? Hmm, that's weird. Anyway, it did pull back down there. I think there was an issue at this point. Uh, we'll pull back into our buy zone. And then it took off. And, of course, that's exactly what you want to do on a 2020 type of trade. I don't know why that didn't uh, tr register the buy trigger unless it was in there wrong. Happens sometimes, not all the time. All right, so let's um, let's review some of the holdings I have. Some of these are not on the HPS watch list. You know, I, I do. Tr I've been getting a lot of uh, into a lot of things, and basically some of these were pullbacks. Remember, the HPS is really based off the H the HPS watch list. It's really based off the methodology, so it has to fit a criteria to get on the watch list, and usually that criteria is one of th the top three setups that I call the playbook plays. The divergent setup, the, uh, the 2020 flag, or the um, triple stochastic flag setup, in some cases we'll call it that. And then usually a combination of, if I do see um, maybe a breakout, a, you know, breakout trade, uh, but the flags and the divergences are number one. And sometimes we do like the channel bounces or a 200 EMA breakdown channel line bounce. It really depends on what the other ones and how good they look. But the more indicators that line up, the more uh, it'll end up on the uh, watch list. But there will be some stocks that I'll get into thinking that there might be some bounces or and stuff. And so I'll go over a couple of those right now. I'll go over those. The uh, Alibaba. Um... It did break down further than I expected. I started getting into this. I have the uh, September and October calls on this that range from 177 to 185, so all the way through there. Um, so, again, you could see at that time when we were trading around 170, I was looking for maybe to get that pop back up, but it's pulled back. So it's down in the 160s, and those... Those options, but this thing could be a you know a big mover if if over the next couple of days I can get back over 170, 175 pretty fast. Well, uh, but they are they don't look like they are going to work out unless we get a nice significant bounce. But you know, looking at the area now, now it has an HPS you know setup. It's a, it really is an HPS setup. It's a lower trend line, oversold stochastic. A level so over the next couple of days if we have another consolidation um, I would look for this to bounce bounce back up here Alibaba so it is a uh, it is kind of an HPS setup now <laughs> go figure right um, BWA I'm gonna go off about a quarter because that's how they are listed on my thing and again this is a uh, not an HPS setup but something that I'm just you know I've, I've liked this consolidation the sideways consolidation trying to capture you know, buying off the low, pushing up a little higher, pulled back. So we actually got a little move, and then it pulled back, a little bounce, and chopping around, and nothing going on in this. So it's, again, just an update. Still holding that B, B, uh, WA. Um, and that, there's not much going on there. Coop, 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 coop. I did sell a little coop today. I took the advice of some of the traders in the room. They're saying, take profits. I was up 100% on them. We've been trading this all along. It's one of my favorites. You know, again, strong stocks have been really good, and this was a gamble into earnings. So we got the pop in earnings. That was the day my, uh, I had the meltdown on the computer. Ended up holding on to it, and today I sold them. 
I sold a par- partial. I still think it moves back up. So I just sold a little of my coop uh, for a double. We started off with four hundred. Do- well, they cost four ten. I sold them at eight something. Um, the FMC, FMC again, another kind of a, a bottoming play, a lower trend line play. It's on the lower trend line. Um, Again, not not going in the direction I'd like to see it. It's pulled back down here. I was looking at this trend line. It actually got down to the lower trend line here. And this is where, you know, the kind of the last line in the sand is. This whole area represents what we call an X mark. It's a spot right here. And it does move up off of that and gets overbought and then pulls back. So it's it's acting normal. It's just, you know, at this point, I think we're looking for this rising trend line to hold and to continue up instead of came down to the lower trend line. Now we need to see that move. But... Nothing, uh, nothing worth getting into unless we see that. Um, hmm. Forty. How did the FMCSLR? I do have, and again, these are just some. Uh, and again, I would just pay attention to the, pay attention to the, um, the HPS setups are on the site FSLR. Everything else that could be could be bottom picking here. It could be my own uh, personal uh, look here. I'm looking at first solar as the bottom down here, but it doesn't uh, doesn't qualify for an HPS. And I don't know if that's going to be hit by any tariffs or anything like that. Um, and then another one, which was an a, a HPS, and I'd still like it. Still like it. It's just a, wow. Look at the last two or three weeks here sideways. So hard to gain any traction on this. I have the options going out to uh, October on this also. And it's just, you know, I wanted to get that pop past this trend line. It held that trend line, started getting a little move yesterday, pulled back. Today it was down a little. It definitely is chopping around. It definitely could go either way still. I mean, the time means nothing for the market. For people holding options on it, it's a much more severe, you know, thing here. Um, this was a nice channel breakout retest pop pull back retest pop hold it i definitely like this down here but the timing uncertain on how fast this is going to eventually start to move back out of this channel i think it's coming maybe uh maybe next week no divergent no uh, hps it's in the middle of a pattern the uh LIXT. Might as well talk about the LIXT. You want to talk about spec- speculative stock that we're in, cancer stock, and you know we've been doing good. I just remember I picked up some more um, yesterday, was it, or this uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, I think it was, eighty cents, and my cost average now on this, I just told him DAC is thirty one cents, so it's trading at ninety five cents. My cost average is thirty one cents. I think this thing goes, you know, volume is coming into it, you know, who knows where this thing could go. It's, it's, a, it's a lottery ticket, but, you know, just kind of updating you on that. Lottery ticket. Uh, right at the close today, well, actually, I want to save that for the members because that's the best bet, and that's an HPS setup, so I won't mention that on this part of the video. Um, Oh, the Altria. Altria is an HPS setup for this week, too, but I'll give you that one. This one extended, ex- extended. We're, we're doing, we're doing, uh, what do we got? September, October is on those. Dollar. Yeah, they're up. We have them at a dollar ninety four trading at three forty five. I have uh, four of the Septembers are break even. Oh, my October's dollar sixty nine trading at dollar nine eighty. So most of these are in the money. And I'm, I'm just looking for a pop. Looking for a pop on the Altria. It doesn't qualify as an HPS at this point. It is an HPS setup on the, uh, on, for this week. And it's moving and grooving. So let's go to that. Let's just show you what that means. So we go to the HPS. We'll see that. Um, where is it? Is it? MO right here. Right here. MO. Uh, you see that just a green dot means it's active. The gold dot means it hit its target. The red dot means it hit its stop. If it doesn't have, that should be a green dot, too. Um, it should be a green dot. I don't know why it's not. So you can see when we have two active right now until I add new ones to the list. 
which you will see at the second part of this the video. I want to try to keep that streak going. Um, so let's take a look at the one that's active right now. And you know, with the uh, HPS video or the chart, you get a video like I'm speaking about right now. So, all right, so this was big pattern, channel within a channel, X marks a spot, big move up, look for a breakout, pull back. There was all kinds of goodness happening there. And now, this is where we are right now. We started getting a pop, we pulled back, we pushed back up. This looks much better. This is the big picture. Even though there might be a small trend line coming down at this level, this looks really good from this angle. So our target 62 on this. And that's where exactly where I wanted. You see that 200 period moving average. It just looks like we're having a little pro problem with that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this one. 62 will be it would be great if we get that. Now the thing is, it is overbought, and that's, like I said, we we could roll over a bit here, build strength, and go for it again. But for some reason, I think we're going to get that pop. So still long and strong, and still making money on that one. And then the PKG you mentioned that the PKG did get stop at, stopped out. Let's take a look at that on the HPS fast. Make sure this is up and running. HPS the PKG. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of this. I want to go back to here. Um, and you can see that the PKG was the one that got stopped out. So I'm going to see why. It's always good to go back to these. And the, the patterns usually are really, I really mark out the patterns well. This was a divergent setup. All right. So the one thing right away I could tell you, I put this, I put the stop in on this because it was a buy trigger. You know, you can see the buy trigger here. There was a little buy trigger. I don't know what the, what this was. I think news. Let's just push on the arrow and see what happened. All right. So it did trigger right in the beginning. Never really got going, though. And then pulled back and then triggered again and pulled back and then hit its stop and then pushed back up. And you can see the tight consolidation here. I still like this one. I'm still holding it. I have the PKG September's 110s straight at 111. And... Uh, so next week is, a, I think, a week for this one. It's not, no longer an HPS setup, of course. It did hit that tight stop. And typically, if you want a divergence setup like you have here, you put that stop one tick under the divergence. I wanted to keep a tighter stop. That's why I got, that's why I got stopped out. But it officially, it did not break underneath the lower low there, which is really the rule of a divergence stop. You always place your stop one tick under the divergence low. We can even go back over here on packaging and see that low and that lower low right there and that low and that higher low. Beautiful divergence, all right? Beautiful divergence, chops around, but you can see the big move up from there. So this is a this is probably just beginning to move back up. I wouldn't get rid of this one yet. The uh, divergence actually looks good. Let's take a look at PKG. I think I wish I was out a little further on these, though. I need these things to move, so I might... Um, yeah, this is what it is. We're in the right direction. It just needs to pop. Hopefully it comes next week. Because this this last two months, from August into September, just not good for the uh, trend. The trend was sideways, not good for options, not good for uh, anything other than ch churn and burn here. So we're waiting for this to pop out of here. Just get the hell out of Dodge on this one. Um... SWK. Now this one could end up being an HP, another HPS setup. I think we had an HPS setup on this once. Uh, SWK. It, did, it was an HPS. Now let me go back to it and show you what we were looking at this at the time of trading this. And then we got back into it. So I remember we traded this on a breakout. We got our move up and then we pulled back and then we got back into it. So let's take a look at it. All right. So it popped up here initially. It, it hit its target real fast, and then it's pulled back. And you can see this magenta type of line here, this underlying um, trend line. I wanted to just separate that because it came down to a spike, and then you had this blue one. There's a lot of chop here too. Um, now let's go back to the other chart. Yeah, you can see this underlying trend line. Kind of tagged it there, tagged it here, and we're right on it again. 
I've seen these come back, retest a double bottom, much bigger, bigger setup. This is starting to roll over and fail is not the best. This would be this, the hold area here. Um, another thing we want to pay attention to, and I always put this as key, key, if we could always remember this. Trends begin with a taking out of a high, you know, usually taking out a higher high, you know. So if we are in a downtrend or just chopping around to the downside, when we break above the previous day high is our first sign of strength usually, and it's a good sign sometimes to get in it. Sometimes they fake you out, but the majority of the time, if you look back at a chart, a very bullish move has a higher high and a higher low most of the time, and the same thing on the way down. Simple rule just to catch the maximum move, you know. You could always just place your stop at the low of the previous day, and you could you could take these swings and be safe about that. This hasn't proven itself anyway yet, but if we did get a pop here and we start to trend out, that's where you really want to be part of it. The chop here is harder to get in. Um, you know, this could be double bottom divergence here. This could be starting to turn back up. It's it's Monday will tell a, a better story on that, so I'm not going to add it. Not going to add that. But you can see I have a lot of positions. That's a little. Oh, I'm gonna put this new one. I got another. I got a new position. We're gonna be adding to the watch list. I got that one. I'm not gonna talk about that. Uh, UNH did pick up some UNH. It's it's it's. Um, we're gonna talk about that one. Uh, next part in the video. The Veru, Veru Insider Buying V E R U. Insider buying today and a divergence. So a, a, a pretty decent divergence on here. Big volume, three times the average volume. Well, a divergence, um, you know, I talk about all the time. We're in this stock, cancer, oncology drug. Insider buyers coming into it now. Looks great. I want to see this thing pop. My comments are, if any news brings us over $3 pretty fast. I think we're... We're ready on this. All right, so that's um, that, and then uh, there's probably some other ones I miss. Oh, the WDC. Mm. All right, a bottom play here, not an HPS uh, by by any means. <laughs> looking uh, looking at a candle today to see if we were going to get a reversal candle. I say that's a high risk maneuver when you try to to find a bottom here. You can see the gap down and push back up and pulled back. So, I mean, there's a little candle here, you know, that takes out the bottom. I don't know if that's going to be the bottom going forward. I don't know if there's going to be some kind of um, activist investors. Something's going to be done here, and it's probably um, it's going to be a rumor of a, a buyout or something. It's probably going to pop back up. It's just a matter of being in it when that happens. So that's it's a risky play on that. But this, this stock and Seagate have history of... M&A activity. Everyone's saying one of those stocks are going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to, uh, what do you call, consolidate. Um, storage is big, but look at the steepness of this pullback. So I think we're probably getting, very, you know, the value on this is getting very interesting. We're going to have some kind of group come in. Something's going to shake it up. Someone's going to shake this up. All right. Uh, fund is going to take, you know, take a big position. Carl Icahn, who knows? I don't know, but something. It's getting very cheap here. Not that that's going to be the bottom. So I would go out, give yourself enough time. For me, I'm out in the Octobers. And that means I would like it to be higher than this level, go enter in October. We'll see. I think we can get back up to 65 real f on any type of interesting news. That might come. Might come. You heard it here first. All right, that's um, that's just kind of a, a review. That took up uh, 30 minutes to review, but it was a lot of good stuff on there. Next section here is going to be the HPS watch list and new setups going into next week. And if you'd like to get those, you have to be a member of Day Trading Radio. Um, so if you are getting it, you are a member. If you're not, then you'll probably get the end of the video right now. All right, thank you very much. So we're going to continue on. Maybe I should do two videos. Yeah, I'll stop this and then, yeah, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to stop this and make another video.